In this lesson, we'll learn how to change the colors and symbology of the different features that are in your map, and to more clearly display the information that you're trying to get across to the viewer. Points, lines, and polygons all have different symbology options. Let's take a look at the points first. To change the symbology, hover the mouse over the symbol in the table of contents and click on it. This will bring up a window that will allow you to change the symbol. There's many preset symbols available, and if you scroll down in this window, you can see some of the options. Also, there's this button called More Symbols, and if you click on that, you'll see that there's a whole library of other symbols that you can use, too. There's literally hundreds of them, and it's pretty easy to get carried away spending lots of time picking out fun symbols. The important thing to remember is what's going to display well on your map and what's going to be a logical symbol so that those that are looking at your map can easily and quickly understand what it is they're looking at. So for now, for this college layer, I'm going to pick a simple star, and I'll use the color palette to make it yellow. And then in the box next to size, I think I'll make it a little bit bigger so it will show up better. And then I click OK, and the symbols will change. I can do essentially the same thing with line and polygon features. For example, if I want to change the color of the towns, I simply click on the swatch showing what color it is. And once again, there's all these preset options. Some are solid colors, some have hatching or patterns, or if I simply want to change the fill color, I can click on that color palette where it says fill color. And I can also change the outline color and the outline width. Now the map is beginning to look both nicer and easier to see the different data that's included in it. Now one thing about this towns layer that might look a little bit odd to you is that it doesn't just include the land, it also includes areas of the ocean that are a part of that town. And therefore both the land and the water show up as features in the map. And right now, all of the features in the town's layer are displaying as the same single symbology, which makes it look like all of that area is land. So what we need to do is distinguish between the land and water by symbolizing them differently. To do this, we can't simply click on the patch of color like we did before, but instead we need to open up the layer properties by double-clicking on the name of the layer in the table of contents. There's lots of different options in the layer properties, and when in doubt, if you want to change something about the layer, this is probably where you should go. Right now, we want to click on the Symbology tab. The Symbology will default to displaying as a single symbol so that all of the features will be displayed the same. But now we want to change that by clicking on Categories. This will make the various features in a layer display as different symbols or different colors based on the value field that we choose from this drop-down menu. For instance, if we leave this value field as town, every feature that has a different town name will be a different color, which might be something that you want to do in your map. However, for the moment, I want to make the water a different color than the land. So if I click on the arrow for the drop-down menu, you can see one of the fields that's in this layer is land. So I'm going to choose land by clicking on it. Then I click on the Add All Values button. You can see that the two values that were in this field are Y for yes and N for no. Now I'm going to double click on the color patch next to Y for yes, which means that these features are land, and pick a color. And then I'll do the same thing for those values of N, or no, which means that these features are not land. And I'll pick out a nice blue for that. Also, for the water, I'm going to get rid of the outline by changing the width to zero. I'm also going to unclick the All Other Values box. This is a default symbol that will show up if there's a certain feature that does not contain a Y or an N in the land field. And then I click OK to apply my changes. Now this is beginning to look a lot more like a real and legible map. Finally, let's try changing some line symbology. I turned off this transportation layer before because when it was on, there's so many roads that show up in the state of Maine that it was just too crowded and too confusing to read. 
If we do want a map of the whole state of Maine and want to show the roads in it, we can fix this by only showing the major roads in this transportation layer. The way to do this is essentially the same as how we made the water and the land different colors in the towns layer. So first we'll need to open up the layer properties by double clicking on transportation in the table of contents. Once the layer properties dialog is open, click on the symbologies tab and you'll see that currently single symbol is chosen so that all of the roads appear the same. So just like with the towns, we want to choose categories instead and then unique values because we want the different types of roads to have different symbologies. Under the value field, I'm going to choose class. This is just a classification scheme that the state of Maine uses um, based on the numbers 0 through 6 to define major and minor roads. As you can see, when you click on Add All Values. So now, just like with the Towns layer, I can double click on any of these individual symbols to change how they look. Now with this particular classification, 0 stands for everything like airport, runways, and railroads, and things that aren't actually roads that you drive cars on. So in this map, I want to get rid of this. To do this, I simply click on that row to highlight it, and then click on Remove. The numbers 1 through 6 all stand for regular roads, with 1 being major highways and 6 being unimproved dirt roads or driveways, private roads, that sort of thing. Since we're looking at the entire state of Maine, those really small roads just confuse the map. So we're going to get rid of those. So let's get rid of number 6, number 5, and number 4. And then uncheck the box next to all other values. So we don't have those values of 4 to 6 showing up as that symbol. Now for the class 1, class 2, and class 3 roads, I can go ahead and make them all the same symbol by double clicking on each one individually. Or I could make the major interstates a different symbol than the other roads. If I want to see what this looks like as I go without closing the dialog box, I can simply click the Apply button. And then once I've found a symbology scheme that I like, I click OK.